Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to show off my self made DDR1 sticks and also offer you a bit of a tutorial on how to uh, bin ICs individually by yourself using Memtest. Now, the reason I started this whole thing is because of these ECC register sticks here. Now, there is basically no ECC registered. Uh, kit with Winbot ICs and Winbot ICs are really the, the ICs you want for DDR1. Uh, now I know there is one kit, Corsair made one kit, but I have never seen one for sale uh, since I looked for it and that's been a couple of years. So I decided to make them myself. So I made a kit of uh, 256 megabyte sticks and 512 megabyte sticks and also some uh, Winbot on Brainpower PCB. Now there is some kits like this out there and so far I haven't really noticed that the Brainpower PCB helps much with uh, the Winbond ICs because they can't do high enough frequencies for it to really matter. But in theory the Brainpower PCB is the best uh, DDR1 PCB. Now not technically not this one with the lip up here but the, the slightly shorter Brainpower like this. This would be the ideal uh, DDR1 PCB for high frequencies. So TCCD for example. Well, only TCCD, TCCD really. Uh, so yeah, that would be the other reason you might want to do this. And yeah, these are the ECC register sticks and that's one more thing for DDR1. Uh, some PCBs have the ranks alternating between the sides. So you can't just assume that a single sided stick is single rank. So if you disable one rank in SPD and then obviously you want to remove the, the chips on that rank. On the brain power PCB it's just uh, if you have this, this notch here facing to the right side uh, then the, the top rank is the first one and the back is the one you would disable. On this one you see you can just copy my, my chip order here. Uh, but if you would obviously remove all the chips from the back uh, this wouldn't post. Now when you do this I would never recommend uh, swapping all the ICs on a stick at once. That's just asking for problems because then if it doesn't post you have no idea why it doesn't post. So what I would recommend doing for starting out if you want to make your first stick is going one by one and between each one test if it posts. I usually go two at a time on these and I haven't had any issues with the last sticks I made. I had a whole bunch of issues with these because they are so tightly packed that uh, I must have missed a bunch of, of, of solder joints when, when soldering them on here with the soldering iron. Now I use the soldering iron for this. Uh, maybe you can also use hot air for soldering them on but I wouldn't because you heat up the chip twice. For removing them obviously you just use hot air and then then grab them with some tweezers, like I do it like this. Now usually I also put a Q-tip in here. Actually, let me show you the the setup. So yeah, that's the the genius chip grabber setup, so that the tweezers stay wide enough. <laughs> in case you have the same Chinese tweezers and want to copy that, because you don't want to grab the chips from these sides, obviously. Now, once you have your little donor PCB here, obviously SBD mod, I, I have a little guide on that as well where, where I show you how it, you can disable one rank. So let's say you want to turn this uh, into win bonds. You make this single rank or you keep it dual rank. You can in theory um, do dual rank sticks as well. And you can even bin the ICs on dual rank, no, no issues really, but I think for binning a single rank is the way to go. And then maybe bin two single rank sticks for example if you want to do rank, bin two single ranks and then swap all of them onto another a dual rank. Because it's not that hard to get uh, these brain power PCBs. They are pretty common. And uh, just get a bunch of, of, of DDR1 out of the trash and well you can clearly recognize them. Because they have this little ground plane down here and like the 
the stripe here. And also front is very like clean, there is no traces here. They are easy to recognize. You will get used to that pretty quickly. Anyways, for example, if you had this, make it single rank, uh, remove all the chips from the back, and kind of do all that in, in one go, because when brain power, uh, the whole second rank is the back, back chips. Uh, obviously, if you use this specific stick, as I just saw here, it's a one gig stick, you would also need to set it to half density. I think I also included that in the SPD tutorial. Anyways, enough rambling about this. Let's move on to the computer and show you how to interpret the uh, memtest errors to find which chip is your worst one, basically. Okay, so here we are, but before starting, I want to credit Beschicht86 on the HWLUX forum for making the original guide on how to tell which memory chip was giving you errors based on your memtest output errors. Now, I'm going to leave a link to his forum post in the description down below, so you can check it out. Uh, it's in German though, so fair warning. But he also included some nice pictures, so if you for any reason find this here explanation insufficient or just want to go back to the source, uh, yeah, check him out. Now let's move on. The way I do it is that I kind of split the memory chip in two. I call this here bank one. It's technically incorrect, I know. That's just how I remember it and this bank two. I know that banks are something totally different when talking about memory, so yeah, you don't need to leave a comment about that. Anyways, so basically you would have chip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 here. This is a 6, this should be an 8 now. Good enough. Uh, now, why you have these two here is, uh, or why I could only uh, narrow it down to two chips before, is because you have uh, only four bytes in your error here, so you have one, two, three, and four. And basically the way you read this is uh, from this side uh, would be from here, so kind of backwards. And without something else, you would only be able to tell that this error byte here is the last one, so it could be either this chip or this chip. Now, how you tell which one of those two it is, uh, is surprisingly easy. Uh, kind of a shame that I didn't figure it out myself, but it is just the last digit of this address here. And basically, if it's either 0 or 8, you are on the first bank. And if it is uh, 4 or C, it's on the second bank. So now you can see here we have uh, obviously the, the high byte here is our error. So that would mean uh, considering this address here, it's eight. So it would mean this, this chip here is bad. Uh, as you can see, this is at the specific frequency. So this is how you bin these uh, or how I bin them. I just go up uh, in 5 megahertz steps usually um, at some point you have to lower it down to smaller steps to find the, the exact one because really important with this as well only the first few errors really matter because after that the data might have corrupted itself and basically what you're getting is uh, follow-on errors from your first chip and the, they might be at a completely different address also uh, this is ideal because we have this test here if you have block move uh, on, on memtest 6.2 is it's um, test number seven on, on the older version it's test number five uh, don't trust the errors that come out of this they sometimes are in the wrong place so if you have a, a stick that only errors out on on block move uh, maybe consider upping the frequency a bit more until it errors out in some other test uh, you can skip tests uh, in the configuration. It's uh, I think it's F1 on some tests and, and C on other mem tests. Also really important, uh, 
if you have ever run memtest before, just as is, you know that you basically get a waterfall of errors when something goes horribly wrong. Uh, there is a function that locks the, the scroll of this console here, and that's a uh, spacebar almost. So just press that and you should um, only see the first few errors. Now, as you can see, this is the, the first example. Let's move on to another one. Uh, should be that one, yes. Okay, so this is, no, it, it, this wasn't the exact stick I show here. It's just for visualization, basically. Anyways, this is, you can see it's another byte that's erroring out. It This is the highest one. So again, do our little one, two, switch to red again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now you can count again backwards. So this would be the highest one, next and next. So it's either this chip or this chip. And if you look at the address, the last digit starts with a four, which means we are on what I call bank two back here. So chip seven would be our bad one with this. Uh, if it was here, the error, so in the, the first byte, it would be this one with this address. Now, for completion's sake, let's also show another version of memtest because not all of you are going to run 6.2 probably, especially because on the DFI boards it has a built-in memtest and it doesn't really like booting from USB. So here we go. This is the DFI integrated memtest version 1.6. So this stuff is ancient and I'm using blue again. And I actually like this version uh, better, to be honest, than the more modern ones. Uh, mostly because it, for one, shows you exactly what you're running. Timing and clocks. And these are accurate, unlike the modern one that doesn't show you anything. And at least for me, it seems harder on the memory for some reason, which doesn't really make much sense because if you think about it, uh, wouldn't you make the mem test harder on the memory if you run a newer version? Anyways, let's do the, the whole diagnosis here again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you can see we are in our second byte again. Our red isn't ideal. Let's do blue. Or not. Come on. So this is the second byte. And so we count backwards again. This is the first one. So this is this. Let's make it quite clear. This is this. This. This is this. So you would see that it is either this chip or this chip again. Now you can see here our address ends in eight. So this means it's on our first bank, so to say, so on this side. So this would be the chip that's bad in this scenario. Uh, another note, in case you want to bin on dual rank, I don't recommend binning on dual rank, but you can bin on dual rank. Uh, on dual rank, Pretty simple for a 512 max stick. If this number here is over 256 max, then you are on rank two. Now, obviously, as I showed you before, that doesn't mean you're on the backside unless you're on brainpower BCB, in which case it means you're on the backside. It just means you're on the second rank. So if they're alternating, Honestly, why are you binning on a PCB that has alternating ranks uh, and is dual rank? But just in case you are, keep that in mind. So yeah, this is basically how you get these uh, memory chips binned. Now once obviously you have found your bad one, just swap it out for another one. 
if your errors get worse or earlier in the mem test, then it's probably worse than the one before. If they go away on that specific uh, error byte here, then you found a better one and you can move on to the next either chip if you have multiple that error at the same frequency or the next uh, frequency step up and sort out the next chip. So one more thing, uh, what can you expect from this? Now I would say if you have only a couple chips to bin and not even that good ones, uh, but BH based win bonds, so 86s, 87.5s, any BH genuine win bonds, uh, not UTTs, uh, I would say 265 to 270 mem test pass is pretty easily achievable. Now, what I did for my two sticks here, those are uh, two brain power based uh, single rank sticks, is I binned 40 ICs, out of which 24 were under 265 megahertz mem test pass. Now, all of this is at 3.6 volts and 16 were under 260. Now out of those 16 under 260, one stick was completely unusable and all eight ICs did under 260. There are just some batches with these that are garbage. So this basically means in the end that uh, with 16 out of 40, I got 275 megahertz mem test pass. So you can see the improvement between the uh, best sticks before, uh, the best stick passed 260 and my end result is 15 megahertz, which I would say is significant. Obviously all at C2. Uh, and if you don't get unlucky and get a, a stick of complete garbage, you could probably get to this uh, 275 plus way easier. Especially if you start out with sticks that are not your rejects, someone else's rejects, just general garbage, basically. Uh, if you start out with, with sticks that do like 265, all of them, you can probably get to 280 even if you bind uh, 40 ICs through, uh, well, through 16 spots, basically. So the best 16 out of 40. So yeah, if, if it's worth worth it to you, you have to decide on your own. But I think I gave you all the tools to truly make your own memory kits now. Anyways, bye.